Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yisrael, the game is Star Trek Online, and welcome to Season 11, New Dawn. And rejoice, for the first time in five years, we are not automatically logging on and assuming we're going to be shot at. This is something of a novelty. And as a note to the galley, whoever served up that green stuff at uh, last night's celebrations, never again. It is no longer to be served at diplomatic functions. Or any other function, except possibly the ones that end up on security reports later. However, today's episode is Sunrise, so needless to say, there are going to be spoilers. If you want to play it blind, then now is a very good moment to stop watching. And, well, we'll just get rid of all the spam from the lucky people who are collecting their lockbox ships. Have some fun with those guys, I'm sure they will be shiny and pretty. Just don't ask about the previous owners. Meanwhile, we need to go talk to Admiral Quinn. A star in an unexplored system near Ferengadar has become mysteriously unstable. And there's nothing to indicate any change, so, um, yeah, we have an excuse to go exploring. Let's go and do exactly that. Pure exploration. This... this can't be right. Featured episode, Sunrise. With the war over, it's time for us to rebuild. To take stock of our situation and to return to our roots as explorers. We've recently noticed that a star in an unexplored system near Ferenginar has become unstable. There's nothing to indicate any change to its stellar life cycle, so this is a perfect opportunity for us to chart the system, investigate the star, and improve our understanding of what's happening. I want you to head up this investigation. Find out why this star is suddenly dying, and make sure it isn't going to be a threat to any nearby worlds or systems. Because after all, Romulus already went boom and we don't want it happening to anybody else. So we need to go to DS9 and pick up a solar specialist. Then it's out to the Ferenginar sector to investigate a sudden instability. For which we get 720 dilithium ore, the weekly reward of either a tech upgrade or a spec point, and a quantum phase torpedo, eh? Oh, that could be interesting. I have to snag one of those. We've also got a set, so quantum phase converter, 20% phaser damage. Oh, that's a nice little tactical boost. That will do very nicely on my escort. Thank you very much. Universal console with plus phaser damage. Oh, yeah. Gonna have some fun with that one. And the quantum phase beam array, and we'll see what the set bonus does later on. It looks like a pretty standard phaser shot so far. And of course, there's also the standard double accuracy and damage phaser turret and dual beam bank. Accuracy is a bit out of fashion these days, but meh, damage is pretty good. In fact, it's one of the better ones now with the recent changes to the metagame. So, we need to go and find this solar specialist, a Cardassian by the name of Tonora Zuval. She's currently aboard DS9. Lucky us, and we can beam her straight out of Quark's bar. Well, that's handy. I suppose we ought to go to Deep Space Nine. Wait, all right. Get the ship together. Energize. Why don't just go into Quarks and get her? Who knows? So, I don't want to dock up. I want to pick up the specialist. And I have my science ship out, my Vesta. She's been in dry dock for pretty much the entire war. I'm trying to think when I last took her out. Not been for a while. Beam up the specialist. Thank you for the pickup. I'm Tenora Zuva. Let's get started. My preliminary observations show some kind of unknown stellar problem. This unexplored system near Ferenginar is undergoing solar death. Basically, it's as if the star is going out suddenly. But there's no good reason why. We need to get close enough to take some readings and see what we can figure out. There'll be shenanigans and we know it. Still, I beamed you away from getting chatted up by Morn, so Helm, depart from Deep Space Nine before he gets our comm frequencies. We'll never get him off the line if he does. And to our destination system, the unexplored system. I wonder if we're going to end up rage, rage, raging against the dying of the light. Certainly there'll be some problems, given I've just gone to warp way too close to the Bajoran sun. That's really not healthy for a star system. However, let's hit the slipstream. To the, um, unexplored system. 
And at this rate, no one's ever going to have to worry about naming it either. Forwards. Forwards at speed. Ah, there we are. One unexplored system. And, ooh, looky, doesn't that star seem a bit familiar? A bright G1V main sequence. So, yeah, basically no rocky worlds, several gas giants. And a G1V that should have stayed stable for the next, oh, few million years or so. That's curious, to say the least. Begin sunrise. Let's go see who's been monkeying around with the trilithium this time. Yink. Ooh, that's very pretty. We're about 0.5 AU out, still no indication, only gas giants and the occasional moon on the Jovians. Well, let's nudge in a little closer because a few kilometers compared to half the distance, what is it, four and a quarter light minutes out? What's a few kilometers here or there regarding that? To the optimal scan point. Full stop. Overshoot the optimal scan point. Be grateful I'm not on the board a Klingon ship and then back it up. Do, 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 do. Probably just turn around and squirt the impulse drive again. There we go. Cut thrusters. Conducts the scans. Initiating scan. Point scanner at target. Getting swamped with solar radiation. Try reducing the gain on your sensors. I'm sorry, whose idea was it to get closer to this thing? And besides, um, this does not look very stable, is... If this is going to turn to a wolf rayet, I do not want to be within half an AU of it. I don't want to be within five AUs of it, for that matter. Initial results don't make any sense. The star's core reactions are failing, but it still has so much mass that it should be conducting fusion. It's as if it suddenly decided that it was no longer going to do hydrogen fusion, just heavier fusion processes. Ooh, terrific, which means that somebody really has screwed with the carbon-carbon cycle. This has got to be the slowest Nova bomb in history. Let's collect this a few... This kind of matter is ejected during corona events. We should be able to collect some with your ship's ram scopes if we head to one of the ejection zones. You want me to fly through... Uh, oh, what the hell, if Voyager can do it, so can I. Go collect some solar particles. Oh, wait, no, no, we don't actually have to go through the actual corona... Unfortunately, if we have to loop under a solar flare at some point, that would be very bad. And scoopy, scoopy, scoopy. Oh, excuse me. Mark. All stop. And then mark again. Mark again. There we go. Match, match, match the wavelength and amplitude. There we go, 100 points. View the results. Results are coming in now. This still isn't making any sense. It's as if the star's life cycle was suddenly accelerated somehow. But it never went through an expansion cycle. There's no good explanation for this yet. Maybe something else in the system caused it. Or maybe whoever caused it isn't here anymore. What if it's affected other if bodies in the system? system why? We should find evidence of similar problems with nuclear and chemical reactions in the system's gaseous bodies. There's a large amount of gaseous stellar matter further from the star. We should have no trouble checking that hypothesis. Ah, right. Um, has somebody tried to jumpstart a second sun? I mean, it's not like it hasn't been tried before. All right. Oh, very pretty. Here we are. This is very strange. Usually nebulae are massive clouds between star systems. Finding a micronebula in a system like this is quite rare. This may be the result of an event such as a cosmic string shearing through a gas giant and turning it back into particulate matter. I'll need some more readings to know for certain. Right, so something blew up a gas giant, and we're right in the middle of it. Yay me! Determine the best places to scan for information. All the particulate matter will make your ship's sensors unreliable beyond a few kilometers, and shields will be offline. The best we'll be able to do is to check small areas until we get close to something unusual. We should head to where the deionized particle density is highest. 
That's nice. Switch to short range scanners, put Ensign Ricky in a suit and boot him out the forward airlock. If he can see anything useful then he can tell us about it. And short range scanners on and launch fighters because we've had nebulous scraps before in their perfect ambush terrain. Commence scan, there we go. Let's go say hi to the deionized particles. Also check my power config, yep that's where it should be. And second wave go, all stop, sample particles. Sample, 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 sample. Deionized particles, icy fragments, trace notes, and another ship. Don't defrost that ice quickly. You really don't want to know, I'm betting it ain't just water. Anyhow, keep searching if there's another ship here, we should see if they know anything. They might even not shoot at us. It might also be what blew up the gas giant. Scans the system. Let's see what else have we got. Tipto, 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 tipto. Check the bearing. Smidge to the right. There we are. Aha! Anomalous particle cluster. And sample, sample, sample. What do we go? Yeah, it's residual trail from an impulse engine and possibly something. Shields up! Red alert! Foley. No, 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 no. We've been ambushed. Tractor repulses, get us some room. Lock on for that mesh weaver. Grab well. Okay, we've lost that. Go evasive. First fighter squadron is down. Mesh weaver is cutting around. Hard out. And forward cannons engaged. There we go. First kill. We need this to demolish that web wall. There we are. Mesh weaver targeted. Main phaser. Fire. And good night. Right, patch up the hull. And we are sorted. Next system body. Tholians? Here? Yeah. They're light years from the assembly. Data is coming in now. Nothing unusual coming in from the nebula. But those Tholian ships were quite far from home. Unfortunately, they can't give us answers. Looks like there's some heavy ionization on the far side of the nebula, though. As if it's receiving some kind of reflected radiation from one of the gas giants. Okay, set a course for the gas giant, and I'm sorry about the Tholians, but you know, they were shooting at us. More or less. I mean, we can we could have tried talking, but hey, no shields and weapons fire, unhealthy combination. Right, so there's a large asteroid ring, a few metallic radiations, and a lot of small debris. Helm, stand by for manoeuvres, let's go get really close to a large radioactive asteroid. Because this is completely healthy. Scans the asteroid. And we've got silicates, iron, magnesium, nothing special. Okay, dump again. Metallic asteroid, scan, 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 the suspicious rock. Zinc, copper, cobalt, tungsten, and mercury. Those are a bit too heavy for first generation solar fusion. And what have we got here? Yeah, you. Oh, right, no, that's just an asteroid fragment. Let's not get hit by the flying rocks. Scan the asteroid. And we've got. Wait a minute, it's been mined? Titanium, uranium, silicon. Low grade warp signature. Okay, so somebody low tech did a little bit of casual asteroid mining. Fine, let's swing close to the gas giant, see if we get something. And. scans a very large planet. What have we got? Several so moons, some of them are habitable, and they're inhabited. Uh, why didn't we pick this up? Thousands of background signals, no preliminary, no class M. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, why didn't we notice the habitable moons in the system? I mean, you'd think slinging an automated probe through here would have been a routine job. Okay, a few minor orbital facilities, 8 billion inhabitants, low power warp trails. Okay. Greetings, unknown vessel. This is Administrator Kumarke. Please provide identification. Well, we're kind of... Owned. Apparently their sensors were better than we thought they were. Hi, we're from the Federation. Welcome to First Contact. Welcome to Lucari. Visitors here are rare, but we're always gratified by the chance to meet and exchange information with travellers. 
I regret that you have arrived at a difficult time. You may have noticed that our home star has become unstable. Yep. I'm leading a project to try to reignite the star. Unfortunately, we've already suffered severe disruptions, and we have a lot of problems to tackle right now. You're welcome, but your star blowing up is probably. As it happens, we noticed. We came to look These at it. These problems started only recently, just a few days ago. Our astronomers noted a significant shift in the star's output, and now it looks like it's guttering and dying. If we can't solve this problem, it's the end of our species. I'm the project leader for our solar probe team. We're going to try to restart fusion with a quantum chromodynamic accretion burst, but honestly, this is a colossal problem, and it may be beyond us. Well, we're part of a much larger fleet, so we might be able to help you out here. Although, to be perfectly frank, we've got more experience with blowing stars up than reigniting them. We have a solar probe ready that contains the booster module that needs to be fired into the star. It's capable of warp 2. There's a problem, though. The probe's remote navigation systems don't work. All of the interference from the solar flaring and guttering is blocking the signal. Could your ship get a trajectory plot so that we could set a pre-programmed course? Well, I'm tempted to ask how you can have a probe so inaccurate that, that it misses the damn star. I mean, all you have to do is, I don't know, point and pull the trigger, but we'll look into it. We can use the computer to build a plot. We'll be nice and happy about that. Adjust trajectories... Okay, so elevation, it should be at 9400, move second point to the right, 9000, and then we'll move the first point down, there we go. Right, so there we are, so that should do the trick, done adjusting for now, display the plot, elevation is good, and angle is good. Okay, so trajectory is fine. We We're getting your got... telemetry now. I'll have my engineers prepare the probe. Let's see if this works. Nothing to worry about, just the future of my planet. You're welcome. We can always evacuate when you blow your star up. We'll hold position. Fire away. The probe's made it out of orbit. Lucky them. Let's go follow it. Moving up. Hits point Engaging one. secondary boost just to head out of planetary range. Secondary boosters are engaged. Let's punch up. Heading for point two. Making its correction. Wow. They've got some good drives on this thing. Probes engine is hitting full burn. It should go to war in a few war. moments. There we go. And telemetry are going. The probe Glances is arriving fine. at the solar corona. Deploying a chromodynamic booster. No effect. It didn't work. Repeat, it didn't work. Well, um, shit. that was our one shot. Thank you for trying to help. I'm not sure what to try next. Maybe we can evacuate a few people. I'm not going to give up, but the situation is grim. If your people can offer any other help, we would welcome it. But I just don't see a way to relocate 8 billion people in the next few hours. Well, we could try reigniting the star, or I believe there was at that time the Enterprise pulled out a truly massive wormhole. Admittedly, it did have to involve uh, blowing the star up, but we've had lots of practice at that, and hey, if a 30-year-old galaxy can do it. Okay, an unknown vessel, eh? Hail My the new arrival. Cal Dano. Looks like I've arrived at the perfect time. I'm here to help with the problem with this star. I'm a scientist, and I have some specialized knowledge that can help. Well, since we don't have any time to waste, I'll accept it. With apologies for the interruption, this is my home star. My people are the ones at risk here. If you have some way to reverse this process, my people should be involved. Okay, that's a reasonable point. Let's hear him out. All right, I'm willing to do so, but it will take me a little while to get a shuttle out there. As you might imagine, things are a little hectic over here right now. Don't worry, the you're a warp culture, the Prime Directive doesn't really apply, we don't need a shuttle. You won't be able to get a lock on my ship interior due to the subspace manifolds. I'll go ahead and bring you aboard. Okay, fair enough, ready for transport. Don't mind me if I bring a heavily armed commando team along, it's just a precaution. 
Hey guys. Oh, this is kind of snazzy. Welcome aboard. I'm Cal Dano. Where are your crew? You... You moved me here without crossing the intervening space. You have quantum teleportation technology. <laughs> yes. We call it a transporter. It has a limited range, but it's useful for going from surface to ship. Impossible! This, this ship's interior is massive, even though it's no bigger than a shuttle. My ship uses compactified subspace folds. It's bigger on the inside. Right now, we have bigger issues to handle. And we've got a ship like that. Little blue box, I think the DTI confiscated it a few years ago. Right, Administrator, what do we got? This is all quite overwhelming. This Caldano person is another stranger from somewhere else. And you're here to help with our dying star? Well, yeah, we were just here to take some pictures and see if we could figure out, but then we noticed you guys and we somehow missed a warp-capable culture. Good thing we weren't around when Earth tried its first jump, or we'd have probably missed that as well. Oh. Yes, I suppose I can see how a star suddenly dying might attract someone's attention. Yeah, normally we wouldn't bother. We'd send the diplomats in to do this, and they'd probably start a small war first. But hey, this isn't normal, so... It's an odd coincidence. We'd probably never have met if it weren't for the trouble with the star. My people have never really had any desire to go exploring out there. We've sent a few probes and met a couple of neighbours, but we're happy at home, and we have what we need, so why risk it? I guess this crisis answers that question. The galaxy is bigger than us, and to survive we need to look past just our home world. Well, it's your lucky day. We showed up instead of, say, the Borg, or the Jem'Hadar, or the Iconians, who would have been a fun first contact for you guys. It sounds like you have a lot of experience in meeting other kinds of people. Maybe if we survive this, we can take the chance and learn more about each other to talk about what we might have in common and what we have to offer. Oh yeah, we've lots of experience in meeting other kinds of people. Um, uh, let's not go into detail, shall we? And I'm sure that we'll want to send over some diplomats, and since you didn't run screaming when the giant freaky space aliens turned up, congratulations, you're now an ambassador. What can I do to help? My home is at risk, I want to do something, to be involved in solving this problem. Okay, so she can stay with me, and she can see how we study and solve, or we can go with Caldano. Stay with me for a moment, we'll s see how this goes. Right, Cal, let's chat, shall Welcome we? Welcome to my ship. Don't be alarmed. This vessel is from the 31st century, and it has some technology you may not recognize yet. I can assure you, though, that I'm here to help. Okay, actually I'm trying more not to freak out at the yellow eyes, because... Well, let's be honest here. Wrong franchise, but this just screams Sith, doesn't it? Yellow eyes, black clothing, mysterious technology. Oh, and we can't scan the ship. Uh, still. Correct. I'm associated with a temporal division of, well, let's just say that I'm an ally from the future, and I'm here to save the Lucari Star. That's nice. Uh, not more time travel. I'm sorry, we drank the ship dry last week. We've no alcohol on board. So, no time travel? No, no. I'm trying to prevent changes. Someone's tampered with this star. It's not supposed to die out here. The Lucari don't disappear today. At least not if we have any say in it. I have some technology that can help, but we'll need to rework it in order to repair the star's fusion processes. What I need you to do is to help me align this matrix to match the star's original spectrum. Okay, that won't possibly give you a way of bringing across a massive invasion force from the future. I'll All regulate right. the device's main power state from this console. Okay, and meanwhile, I really hope you've got a good user interface on this thing, so... Adjust the red spectrum. And it should be down at 620 to 750 nanometers. Let's toggle it down. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Yoink, there we go, lock in at 750. Red spectrum is correct. Ooh, shiny. Uh, 
Okay, he's a hybrid of human and Vulcan with Lucari. So he's protecting his own ancestors. Fine. That means he's probably more reliable. Let's finish repairing the star. And it also implies that at some point the Lucari are going to join the Federation if humans and Vulcans are involved. Um, how does transporter it work? Basically, it rips you into tiny little pieces, shoves them downstairs and puts them back together again. And if you're really lucky, they come out the same order they went in. Increase the wavelength to blue, just get the high frequencies correct. And yoink, there we go, and lock. Why are time travelers involved? No clue. Trust me, don't get involved. It's more trouble than it's worth. Okay, was the ship meant to shudder when we did that? Sounds like whoever tried to destabilize the Lucari star has decided to come knocking. Let's see who. <sighs> They're packing a real wallop. Shields just went down. We have incoming. Weapons ready. We have, as you say, what incoming. What are those things? Tholians, yay us. Lucky me, so Tholians. why are the Tholians Keep them away. I need to finish these computations. Why are the Tholians even trying to blow this place up? There's a mystery for you. Come on, down you go. Get a triangle to scan in on him. And, well, no real reason to switch for the exploit there. He was going down anyway. Bye bye, Ensign. And disintegration there. Little pop. And orders are well and truly. I have the device repelled. shielded in a force field, but I can't deploy it until these Tholians are out of the way. Shields That's are back nice. online. They shouldn't be able to get any more boarding parties over. That's fine. We'll just keep shooting Tholians. Why did I make the mistake of saying that I wasn't going to get shot at today? Oh, excuse me. Boom, and headshot. Yay, headshot. No disintegration, though. I feel a bit cheated. Come on, down you go. There we are. Right, any more for any more? Just the one. And there goes Ensign Spider. Yoink. Right, Carl, now that we've dealt with the imminent violence, why don't you throw We've got a breather. Now I just have to charge the device and prepare it for use. In just a few minutes, it'll propagate a quantum wave shift that should correct the star's stalled fusion process. You should head back to your ship, and I'll send the administrator back home. Okay, that works. I'm still thinking Sith, but let's head back and prepare for the sudden but somehow inevitable treachery. You never know, we might get a pleasant surprise. Maybe. The device Perhaps. is charging. We're just a few minutes away from repairing the star. Okay, standing you by. Talk, out. What? Seriously? Just now the Tholians want my quantum phase inhibitor. Wait, wait, wait. Tox Utat? Um, I know that device. It doesn't exist. Well, it's one of those things. Come on. Come on, give me a weapon slot. Thank you. And... No, we'll just hammer these guys down. No real reason to blow the big phaser at this point. We will just collapse your shield grid. Come on, down you go. There we are. Shield's temporarily knocked. Keep the cannons on him. And... You will surrender Boomski. the talks you have, or you will be destroyed. Obviously, you will have a happen. nice day. Just need a little more time and we can rejuvenate the star. Um, but the Toxu Tut is fictional. More or less. I mean, didn't John Luke blow it up about 30 years ago? Assuming it even existed. Anyhow, loop down, loop back. Okay, almost got him. Boomski, lay onto that orb weaver. Shut him down. A little bit of webbing and scan initiated. Also, double scan. And then, huge honking phaser. Have it. That's nice. Well, if you find a way to nick it to warp core, then by all means, tell me about it. But until then, don't bother with gravity well. Lucky him. Well, I want some of those to play with. There we go, there's another one. Mesh weaver there. Hard up. And you're just one final old weaver to kill. 
down round, launch fighters, and have a little bit of subspace destabilization, just to make sure you really don't go anywhere. Also scan. Really? A web orb. Tractor repulsors out. Clear this out. We'll stop. And there we go. Busted out. Boost of power. Boom. And we're out of the rapid fire. Attack team out. Just clear this orb weaver. Biograph well. Yoink. Gonna stop again. A little bit of hull healing just to patch up. And we might as well kill these web nodes the old fashioned way. Oh, there we go. One orb weaver. Resume the shooting. Are you not dead yet? No? Hit it. Fine. Go and boom. Firing in three seconds. Two, one, sudden doom. Okay. It's working. Look at the star. Check the spectral readings. The fusion process is reigniting and it's returning to normal. Yay! We haven't got to evacuate eight billion people. Some Readings of those are stabilizing. Just at our home system. They're attacking our home world. We don't have any way to repel starships like this. Please help us. On our way. Let's go kill some Tholians. Hey guys, we're here to hurt you. Nothing Please, personal. It's just that them. you. We don't have any warships or space weapons. Consider yourself so very, very lucky. Here endeth naivete. Subspace destabilization out. Otherwise, the hull, reinforce the shields, and then start blowing up foliants. Reinforce auxiliary. Fight us away. Punch up the speed, get the bow around, lock onto this or we've a rapid fire again. Why are the foliants so desperate to kill the Lucari? Boom. And... Okay, just about got him. Again, won't bother with the huge phaser because, well, kind of un kind of overkill at this point. However, not when it comes to you, my friend. Lock on and have some phaser. Dead yet? There we go. And finally, the mesh lever. Board cannon again. Says we're not so we need it. need my ship in a web. I need your help. Fine. Locking on to recluse glass carrier. Gravity well out just to stop any fighters. And then we'll sub nuke him, scan him, and proceed to just beat him to pieces. That web didn't last, did it? More subspace disruption. And while he's working out what happened to the fabric of reality, we'll They've just... stolen my quantum phase inhibitor! Oh, so they did get the Toxutat. Lucky us. Temple Prime Directive's probably going to cause us a few issues here. No doubt you want us to go and get it back. Fine. Well, I'm sure we can do that. Lock down that one, and then lock onto the last Weaver. Again, this sensor analysis in play. Keep the beating coming. Boom. Right, so Cal, they stole your little gizmo. How bad is it? Go Thanks on. for the save, but the Tholians managed to steal the Tox Uthot while they had my ship webbed. That must have been their plan all along. My data suggests the Tholians used a trilithium warhead to destabilize the star but the amount of resources needed to build such a weapon makes it inefficient to say the least. No, I suspect somehow they knew I would come here to save this star, and I would bring the Toxuthot. Fortunately, the Lucari star is safe. However, nobody else will be, as long as the Tholians have that device. They could use it to snuff out or destabilize stars anywhere they want. Yay us! Well, that's a 
wonderful situation. Okay, what's their next target? I have some thoughts on that, but I will need to do some calculations. These events, and the Tog's Uthod itself, are tied up in the Temporal Cold War. The Tholians may not care, but by using the Tox Uthoth, they risk distorting the timeline by wiping out civilizations that are supposed to survive into the future, such as the Lucari. I'll be in touch. At least now the Lucari will have a promising future. Lucky them. Show about anyone else who's about to have their star yeah, blown up. Correct. You have preserved our future. My people will be forever grateful. Not to mention my personal gratitude, of course. I think we have a bright future ahead of us, if you'll forgive my play on words. I am eager to see where it leads. Thank you once again. You're welcome. You won't be thanking me when Jiro gets in system, but that's another matter entirely. I wish I could ask you about your science, your trade, your society. Oh, I suppose there will be time for all of that now that our crisis has been averted. Well, oh then. yes, there... Oh yes, there will be time. Much time. So much time. Uh, and when Jiro Sugihara starts talking, you're gonna need all of it. First contact is oh, our most important duty. I think duties. our friend the administrator here is going to need a ride home. Would you mind? If you'll pick her up and take her home, I'll start looking for more data about the Tholian's plans. Okay, we'll rendezvous shortly and pick up the administrator. After all the Prime Directive's already blown three ways to Sunday, we can give her a free ride home. I have collected an amazing amount of information about what happened to this star. That's nice. And you Thank can you for bringing get me a along. journal article. Once we're back in Allied space, I'll take a shuttle home. You're welcome. Um, just remember, guys, uh, purge the data logs of that shuttle when you're done. I'm sure she'll have the ship's blueprints stashed somewhere. Transport the ambassador home. And that is that. So we have our first contact with our new species, the Lucari. And we're waiting for the Thurians to show up with the mysterious future Tox Uthat, which um, Jean-Luc Picard, well, he blew up one of them a few years ago. Uh, apparently there might have been more than one, or it is that one, in which case things are going to get very, very confused. That has been Sunrise, ladies and gentlemen. Let's depart the system and then have a look at the shinies, in particular that new torpedo. So, I suppose we really ought to hail command. Jarell, what do we got? The first contact is a significant event for the Federation. We will be glad to open a dialogue with the Lucari people. Unfortunately, the loss of the Tox Uthat is troubling. We have some reports about this device from when Jean-Luc Picard encountered it on Ryza in 2366. And obviously, we can't let the Tholians keep a piece of future technology that can destabilize stars. We'll have to deal with that later. Yes, that's not ominous at all. So let's pick up our quantum phase torpedo, collect that reward, and lost and found is of course the new Cardassian arc, so I'll do that off camera. So quantum phase torpedo, what do we have? Info. Standard payload, in the case of an addition to payload, it destabilizes shield arrays, so we get an area of effect shield burst. To all targets within two kilometer radius high yield increase it to four kilometers and plus crit chance plus crit severity okay not too shabby at all oh and restoring allied shields within range okay it doesn't mention that in the description right let's you know let's load it up and see what happens uh, yoink just dump one of the auxiliary phaser cannon. And then info. Ah, there we go. So with extra options from various bits and pieces. Set option, phase shot optimizations. So 15% accuracy and doubles potency of the shield drain and shield heal and the destabilizing beam. Oh wow, that's another uber phaser, isn't it? So that's 35,000 phaser damage for 10 seconds, minus 4 power and plus 4 power with a power drain on top. That's from my... That isn't from the weapon, of course. That is coming off the plasmonic leech, so ignore that bit if you haven't got that loaded. But if you haven't, get yourself that console. It's one of the most useful ones in a sustained battle. 
Um, do, 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 do. Kinetic resistance exposed targets. That's from command. So, 1200. Yeah. Still not sure where that shield heal is coming from. But, yeah, that could be an interesting little replacement for a standard quantum torpedo if you're using one. So, I'll give that a try off camera, see how it goes. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, when doubtless we're going to be having a run-in with the Tholians, farewell.